is number one, try to identify guys that are growing. Try to identify guys that are not only growing, but guys that are willing to serve. All right. You see, guys, uh, guys that are willing to serve, that's got to be the key part. OK, you know, it's uh, I, I, I tell new people all the time that, uh, that 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 come to Dublin when they when they join up with us, that uh, the, the, the church setting team is done. Uh, it's full. And, and what I mean by that is uh, the, the, the group that we have that does nothing but sit in a chair and occupy a chair. That team is full. We're no longer it's no longer accepting any members. All right. Everybody with me there. OK, so, you know, by that, if God's brought you in here to be a part of this, he's brought you in here to do something. Right. All right. Everybody with me there. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right. Uh, you know, he, he's brought us to the feed trough. It's time to eat. But then it's once we eat, it's time to get out there and start doing something. When it comes to lay pastors um, and, you know, the same thing, same thing with the elders. These, these have to be guys who are willing to serve guys who are willing to, to, to get their hands dirty. All right. Um, and so with that, when we talk about, you know, appointed and replaced by the pastor at his discretion, uh, with that, our lay pastors, our lay pastors in our churches, uh, they're, they're really going to take the place of, uh, of a lot of paid staff in, in traditional churches. OK, uh, they're going to be able to do things. Uh, they're going to be empowered to do things that, you know, that that might that other churches might require. There be a staff member to do that or something. Now, another key with this, a key with this is is that second section there where it talks about lay pastors uh, as resource people. Now, you know, Homer, Homer did a great job going over this morning, the team concept and how our teams function and how our teams work and, and how our team or, or uh, man, that's the that's the that's the hands and feet of the church. Uh, every lay pastor is going to be attached to a team. Now, in some instances, you know, in, in maybe if if you got a bigger church uh, that um, you know you've got a whole bunch of teams, uh, but you've only got a few lay pastors. Uh, that that lay pastor may have to be attached to man to to, to two teams. Okay, uh, he may have to pull some double duty there. Uh, I mean, I, there's been instances where uh, there's been lay pastors that have been attached to three teams. Now, personally, I think that's that's a little too much uh, when you talk about everything that the teams are doing. But each lay pastor is going to be assigned to one of those teams to help them. Now, here's here's the key part. Here's the key part, because this 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 gets messed up a lot of times in a lot of places, and especially with some younger churches. The lay pastor does not run the team. Everybody with me there? Lay pastors do not run the team. And, and guys, that's key. That's key because a lot of times with, within our churches, when someone is given a title, okay, when someone is given a, 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 a title, automatically there's people within the church that now granted there, there, there's, you know, respect can be earned there, but a lot of times because that person has a title, they're going to automatically defer to them and ask them to make the decision. That's not the case with our lay pastors. Our lay pastors do not run the teams that they're attached to. All right. They do not, uh, they do not lead the team. They are a resource for that team, all right, as, they, as they're attached to them. Uh, they, they serve, and I, I never can say that L word, Lee, 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 somebody say it. There you go. That's what they, I can't say that, man. They, they serve as that to the team and to the pastor, okay? Uh, your lay pastors, guys, you know, if you're a lay pastor, if you're, if you're feeling led that God's going to call you there, you need to be in constant communication with your pastor, you need to let him know what is taking place within that team. All right. That's pretty elementary, isn't it? Uh, because your pastor, your pastor cannot make every team meeting. All right. Everybody agree with that? They cannot do it. If they try to do that, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to burn out. All right. They are going to flame out. They're going to be overworked. Their family is going to suffer tremendously. And if their family suffers tremendously, I'm going to tell you right now, the church is going to suffer tremendously. Your pastor, don't expect your pastor to be at every arena team meeting, audit team meeting, care team meeting, hospitality meeting, uh, buckaroo meeting, whatever, whatever meeting it is. It's just not possible. That lay pastor is the one that's going to be there and going to be that resource person for the pastor. Okay. And who's going to keep him updated as far as what's going on with every single team. All right. Uh, the leadership that the lay pastor has on that team, they're going to help that team. They're going to remind that team uh, to stay focused 
on the spiritual aspect of, of the ministry of what that team is trying to accomplish, okay? Uh, you know, Homer talked about the five C test here this morning when he went over to the teams. You know, that, that first one, if you would, is it Christ-centered? Lay pastors, you need to be helping to make sure that that is the number one focus of that team, that what they're trying to do is Christ-centered above everything else. That's your responsibility as a lay pastor. You see down there in that third section, uh, where it says active roles in worship, all right? Active roles in worship. Uh, lay pastors, you know, you're, you're going to be called upon to, to, to have an active part in that worship service, all right? Whether that's getting up, making announcements, uh, whether that's uh, uh, helping with baptisms, uh, your, 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 your face is going to be up there a lot. You need to be comfortable with that. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you need to, you need to build a bridge and get over that and, and become comfortable. All right? Everybody with me there? You're going to take an active, active role in the worship service. All right? Uh, you, you're going to be, you may be asked to, to bring a devotion. Okay? Uh, you may be asked to, oh man, you may be asked to preach at some point. Okay. Now that's, uh, I, I, man, I am blessed with a wonderful, wonderful group of lay pastors right now. And, uh, man, I've got one of them that, uh, this guy, I, I'm telling you, if I would step down, I think he, I think he would, he would jump in there and preach every single Sunday for me. He, 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 God has got a hold of him and man, he is, he is, he'll, he'll send me an email, be about five pages long of a message that God's given him. Okay. Uh, now I'm not saying that every lay pastor, is, is going to be called to preach, all right? But more than likely, there's going to be an opportunity for you to preach, okay? Um, you need to be aware of that going into it. Uh, now, that's not a requirement. That's not a requirement for it that, 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 you're, that you have that ability or you have that desire or you have that want to or you say, man, yeah, I'm going to get up there. And not everybody can be a Joe Cox, okay? Um, and I don't know how much Joe's story that he, that he shared, but not everybody's going to go from, from, from picking up trash to all of a sudden, man, next Sunday they're up there. No, he wasn't up there the next Sunday, but, you know, everybody's journey is a little bit different. But as a lay pastor, you can expect that those opportunities are going to be presented to you. Okay, uh, you need to be you need you need to be willing to lead a Bible study. Okay, uh, lay pastors need to be growing. You need to you need to have an active daily uh, relationship walk communication, if you would, with the Lord. If you're not if you're not actively every single day walking and talking and hanging out with God. Uh, then guys, you, you know, you got to understand it'll be hard for you to be a lay pastor if that's not taking place. Um, you, you're going to be, uh, your pastor is going to be watching you. He's going to see what your gifts are. He's going to see what your talents are. And, and I promise you, he's going to pull those out of you. Okay. He's going to pull those out of you. When you get to that next section, ministers to the congregation, um, this, this is key. Lay pastors help the pastor minister to the needs of the congregation in many different ways. Um, I can tell you, and I'm speaking from experience as a pastor, okay, as a pastor. So many times uh, somebody will come up to me. Now, I only get to see the majority of our people once a week, okay? When you look out, if you've got... If you've got 200 people out there, if you've got 300 people out there, 400 people, uh, you're really only getting about 30, 45 minute, minutes with them in a week, okay? Uh, and, and as you look out there, there's no way, there is no way that your pastor can go to each and every one of them and know, know uh, each and every one of them personally. It's just, man, it, 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 it's, it's not possible to do. So lay pastors, you have to help him out there. You need to know the people. You need to help him. The people that he don't know, you need to know, all right? Uh, you need to be, you know, new people coming in, you need to be greeting them. You need to be meeting them. You need to be finding out who they are. Uh, don't, don't go up to your pastor and say, you know, hey, uh, man, Homer ain't been to church in three weeks. What's wrong with him? You know, it, it, you, you gotta, if you got a phone, call him. Call Homer and say, hey, buddy, what's going on with you? Hadn't seen you in three weeks, just wondering where you were. All right. Uh, and, and, I, and I tell you, guys, that happens to me every single Sunday. Well, I haven't seen so-and-so, and I may not even know so-and-so. I haven't seen them in, in a couple of weeks. What's going on with them? Well, man, I don't know. You know, if you know them, if you have a relationship with them, call them. All right. Uh, you know, make hospital visits. Help him out there. Uh, some pastors, some pastors love, love doing hospital visits. Some of them, man, they, 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 they struggle with that. 
It, you know, man, go, go, go make a hospital visit for him. Check on a family. Uh, you know, help, help him out with that way. Uh, the teams that you're attached to, whatever team that you're attached to, guys, you need to know that team inside and out. You need to know the families on that team. If, if Susan's grandmother passes away, you need to know that. Okay, you need to know that and you need to communicate that to your pastor, but you also need to be ministering to Susan's family. She needs to know that, man, you're, you're, you're praying for her. She needs to know that you're going to help them get stuff lined up for, for what, what, whatever they need. That, that team, uh, the, the, you need to know each and every one of them intimately. Okay, you need to know what's going on in their life. If they've got a kid, if their kid is, man, running off out into left field and, 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 and being ignorant, whatever it may be, you need to know about that. All right, help them out. All right, encourage them through that. Okay, uh, the, what, you know, one of the things that I like to say with this, that team, that team that you're attached to, guys, that, that, that can function like a small group. Okay, that can function like a like a small group as you guys meet and as you guys minister to them and as you guys walk with, you know, walk through some hard times with them. Um, as a lay pastor, you need to be willing to to take on that role and you need to be willing to step in there and do those things uh, that it takes to, to minister to that team. All right. Qualifications. Now, here's the fun one. Qualifications. What qualifies you to be a lay pastor? Well, you need to be growing in the Lord. Okay, you need to be growing, and and I'm going to repeat this because it's it's worth repeating, um, and and you see it down there in your booklet. You need to have that active daily relationship with the Lord. All right, if you're not having that active daily relationship with the Lord, then guys, I'm going to tell you right now, there's it, it's it is impossible for you to grow. It's impossible for you to get to where God is wanting you to get. Now we're not saying that uh, that you have to be a Bible scholar. We're not saying that you have, to, you have to have the Bible memorized from Genesis to Revelation. We're not saying that you have to have a seminary degree. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is you've got to be willing to invest the time into the Word, man, to learn it and to grow, all right? Um, you don't need, to be, don't need to be a recent convert. Uh, you know, and, and man, in, in Cowboy Church, I guarantee you some of the best, some of the best lay pastors that I've ever had have, have been guys that have been a little bit rough around the edges, okay? Uh, because those, some of those guys that are a little bit rough around the edges, when we go, we go back to the model, we go back to the bullseye, uh, we go back into that culture, uh, those guys are, they're, they're a little more open to coming up and uh, uh, opening up to one of those guys, okay? Uh, so you don't have to be perfect in order to be a lay pastor. You look at the, uh, man, you look at the, you look down there at the bottom, it says, uh, man, a lay pastor should have a stable home life all right a lay pastor should have a stable home life guys we need to hear that be respected by others in the culture in the community and should not engage in activities that would bring reproach to the lord or the church all right so guys you don't need to be out in the you you, you don't need to be out in the community acting ignorant or acting a fool or hanging out at the bar with your with your Cowboy Church Monte Camp Monte County Cowboy Church shirt on or cap on or whatever, hanging out in the bar, settled up there drinking you four or five beers, whatever it may be, and and broadcasting that, man, I'm a lay pastor out there. No, it don't work that way. All right, it don't work that way. All right, don't you don't make good decisions. All right, and I, I think that's pretty elementary too, isn't it? You expect your pastor to make good decisions, right? Man, if y'all don't, I want to come here, man. You do. You expect your pastor to make good decisions. All right. As a lay pastor, as a representative of this body, of this congregation, more importantly, as a representative of Jesus Christ, all right, you need to be making those good decisions too. All right. That, that, does that not make sense? Is that fair? I think that's fair. I think that's fair. And you've also got to understand, and, and, and it's in there, I didn't cover it. You know, if you're appointed, if, if your pastor comes to you and says, hey, Mike, I, I, man, I just, I, I want you to pray about this because I, I just, God's been leading me to you uh, that I think, uh, man, he's, he's, he, he may be wanting you to be a lay pastor. You know, it, it's just, just, you know, be willing to pray about that. Be willing to, be willing to, 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 to commit that to prayer and, and, you know, understand that you're not making a lifetime commitment. Once you're a lay pastor, it's not about always being a lay pastor. It doesn't mean that you're going to be one until the, until the day you die, all right? Uh, you can be, man, you may, you may agree to do it for a year, and after a year, it's like, hey, 
this man, this more, this, this, this ain't for me. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But it also may be this. You may be that guy that, that, that God is, is calling to serve in that role that he is preparing you for something bigger. Okay? He's preparing you for that next step. Maybe his ultimate call on your life is to be an elder. Okay? And, and that's, what, that's what he is preparing you for. Maybe you've served as a team leader and you led exceptionally well. Okay, and that next step, guys, would be would be would be to go into that lay pastor role, and then an elder. And who knows? Don't say it. Don't say. Do not say, fellas. Do not say. I, I man, I I will never pastor a church. God will never call me to be a pastor. Don't don't you? I'm gonna tell you right now. If you say that with it within five years, you're gonna be pastoring a church. All right. Don't say that. All right. God's got a sense of humor that way. I promise you. I'm one of those guys. I'm one of those guys. Spent 12 years in youth ministry. Love working with teenagers. Love working with teenagers. I had patience with kids. I didn't have no patience with adults. All right, kids didn't know better. As adults, we ought to know better. All right? And when I left that last church, I said, man, I'm done. I'm done. I ain't ever, I ain't ever serving on a church staff again. Ain't no deacon ever going to come jump on me for kids making a mess. Ain't no custodian going to come tell me whatever because, because they're Kool-Aid got spilt on the pretty carpet. There ain't no bus committee going to say, man, them kids left the bus all nasty and all that sort of stuff. I'm done with that mess. Been in this spot for 18 years now. All right. Don't tell God what you ain't going to do. Okay. Guys, be open to it. Be open to it. And you just might not, you know, you just, if, if you bow your neck and say, man, that ain't going to happen for me, you may miss out on the biggest blessing that you'll ever have. All right. Cowboy Church. Cowboy Church, I'm going to tell you something, fellas. It's, it's raising up men. It's raising up men and getting men in the role that God designed you for. Okay? You understand that? All right? Because we, we've got to get back to that. Men, we've got to embrace the role that God has created us for. All right? Uh, don't, don't run away from it. Don't shy away from it. All right? Be willing to accept it. Be willing to accept it and to serve. That's what it's about. It's about washing other people's feet. It's about serving other people. It's about being obedient to Christ. Okay? When we do that, when we say yes to that, man alive is the greatest, 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 greatest thing we ever get to experience in our lives. Okay?